Okay, so in this video, I wanted to run over a uh, three-point cross with you guys. It's not very difficult mathematically wise, but concept wise, you can get lost if you don't know exactly what you're doing. So I'm going to go step by step through the four questions you're going to get asked and just show you exactly the way I work through it in my head. So the first thing you need to realize is that these aren't in order. Well, they could be but they're probably not going to be in order. This A, B, C that you see, and this is positive, 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 I'm using that instead of writing lower, instead of writing uppercase letters. You'll see that a lot in your exams and your tests, so I wanted you to get used to it by doing that in this video. So you'll see that this A, B, C that I have is not in order. So the first thing, the first question you're going to get when you see this is determine the gene order for these I'm going to quick write the total because I forgot to write the six here the first thing you're going to they're going to ask you to do is determine the gene order now the way I decide to do this is the gene order is basically first thing you have to do is identify the double crossovers so here you have your parental set you know it's your parental because you have these homologous pairs, these uh, recessive, these dominant trait pairs. So these are your phenotypes for your parental types, and then these are your crosses. So these are also the largest numbers. You see your parental types will most likely be the largest numbers. And to find your double crossovers, first thing I do is I just find the lowest numbers on the chain. So I have a 10 here, and I have a 14 here. So these are your double crossovers. These are your um, D, C, double crossover. We'll write D, C for double crossover. OK, so we've located a double crossover. And now we can use these to find gene order. Basically, we're looking for which two in this set crossed over. So first of all, we have A, uppercase B, uppercase C. So in this case we have a double crossover and we see the two things that crossed over are the B and C leaving the A intact so first of all I'm looking at the A now so I see that we have an A intact here and then I see the other one okay 14 so we have a double crossover we have a positive A well in this case the positive so the uppercase A stays and then the B and the C they do the crossover so here we have an A. So now we can determine our gene order to be A is going to be in the middle. So your actual set, the way you're going to look at it is you're going to go B, A, C. So what you're actually doing is you're determining the distance between B and A, and you're determining the distance between A and C, and then you're going to add them. So determining the distance is actually pretty easy. Basically what you're going to do is you're going to identify your uh, single crossovers. Your single crossovers are going to be the ones that are left over here and here, here and here. And you're going, to, you're going to want to combine these based on basically the size or the number of the offspring. So here we have a 40 and a 42. These numbers are closer together than the 42 and the 97 or the 40 and the 101. So I'm going to want to keep these two together. So we're just going to put this as one, we're going to put this as one, we're going to put this as two, and we're going to put this as two. These numbers mean nothing. They're just to show you guys that these two are combined, and these that these two are combined, and then these two are combined. So the formula for this is you're going to add your two single crossovers, the ones that we combine. So you're going to add 42, 42 plus 40 plus your double crossovers. So you want to add the number of your double crossovers. So here we have 10, here we have 14, so I'm just going to go ahead and write 24. Okay, now this is all divided by the total number of offspring. So here we have 1006. Now I went ahead and did this math before this video so that way you didn't have to wait for me to do the calculations, but at this point you can pause the video figure it out yourself and then see if we match. So here you see what I got for this is I got 0 0.105. But in this case you're not done yet because in order to get the distance you have to multiply it by 100. So times 
100, basically what you're looking for is your percentage here. So just imagine you're trying to find your percentage. So you, you have 10.5%. But what you're going to see this answer is, is in UMs, or is basically a distance of measurement. So UM, distance of measurement, or percentage, is equal to UM. So that's equal to U dot M. OK. So now we have to find the next one. The next one that we see, we have a 97 and 101. So this is 2 and 2. We're going to combine these. So we're going to do 97 plus 101 plus 24. So you want to do your other pair of single crossovers plus your double crossovers. So 24 double crossovers. We got that. And I apologize for my straight lines. I'm still getting used to this drawing software. So 1006. So this is equal to 0.221. Again, if you need to pause the video, take time to figure this out, go ahead and do that, and then just resume it, and I'll be here working it out. So then we're going to multiply this by 100. We're going to get 22, 22.1%, or, again, equal to your distance. So it's equal to your distance in UMs. And this is not it though because we have this distance and we have this distance but in order to find the total in order to find the total gene distance we have to add them together. So we're going to go ahead and just add these two. 10.5 plus 22.1 so you have 32 so you add these two 32 32 Point six. I'm going to go ahead and write this in the. Go ahead and write this in the distance in the measurement. Okay, so here we have our distance. Once we have this, we say okay. So we know what now we need to want. Wow. So once we know our distance between each of them, we can go ahead and figure out the coefficient of coincidence. This is when I can start explaining a little bit more conceptual stuff. But before this, it wouldn't make very much sense. Okay, so we have our equation for our coefficient of coincidence. We want to do our double crossovers divided by this number, whatever, one of the single crossovers, and then divided by this number, times this number, times this number, times your total, and then all of that is under your double crossovers. So let me write that down. So we have 14 plus 10 plus 10 divided by your first distance 0 0.105 times your second distance. Remember, this is multiplication. You can't forget the denominator is multiplication. You won't get the right answer. Point 2, 2, 1, and then this is all multiplied by your total. So 1,006. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in parentheses. Go ahead and put this in parentheses. Okay, so this is equal to your coefficient of coincidence. And in this case, it's equal to one point. O three, so that's your coefficient of coincidence, or your c dot o dot c. I want to take a little bit, and I want to talk to you about just the differences here. So basically, the coefficient of coincidence is the measure of interference in the formation of crossovers. So the different distances are going to affect your rate of formation. So if we have a higher distance between this, there's going to be less of a rate of form less of a rate of formation. Let's, let's take, take this as an example. So the closer that this gets to 1, 
and the closer this gets to zero, it means less is being taken off. So the higher these numbers are, the lower your coefficient of coincidence is going to be. And the lower these numbers are, the higher your coefficient of coincidence is going to be, right? So let's say this number was, you know, just ended up being 1. Well, it'd be 14 plus 10, so 24. So you'd have a 24 coefficient of coincidence. So that'd be pretty high. And if these are, you know, 0, you can't divide by 0, but let's just say it's a really low number, like 0 0.001, then it's going to be not divided by a very big number, and your coefficient of coincidence is going to be relatively low. I'm sorry, you would have like, say this is 100, it would be divided by a higher number, your coefficient of coincidence is going to be relatively low. So in this case, we want to figure out your interference, which to do this, they just take 1, and then they minus it by the c dot o dot c. So in order to figure out your interference, it's 1 minus minus c dot o dot c. So 1 minus your coefficient of coincidence. In this case, your coefficient of coincidence is 1.03. So we have 1 minus 1.03. And yes, this number can be negative. Equals point negative point zero three. So in the case of this being negative, all it really tells us is that a negative influence increases the chance of a genetic crossover, which makes sense if you go back and you think about the denominator, and you think about, well, if this number is going to be bigger than this number, then there's going to be a less, there's going to be less interference because this number, your coefficient coincidence, is going to be smaller. But if this number is bigger, you know, if the distance between these is less, your number is going to end up being bigger. And you'll, you know, it all, it all makes sense if you work it out. So your interference, basically, the increases, the negative interference just increases the chance of genetic crossover. The closer they are, the greater the chance of crossing over. So that's basically why you want to determine the gene order. Then you can determine your gene distance. You can determine your coefficient of coincidence. And then you can determine your interference. So again, your formulas, I'm just going to run over them one more time. Basically, you want your single crossovers plus double crossovers divided by your total, you add those, you get your distance. That's the only thing you use this number for, your distance. Then you have your, you have your double crossovers divided by whatever this, before the percentage was, whatever this number is, before you multiply it by 100, that, this number, times the second number, times your total equals your coefficient of coincidence to figure out your interference, one minus coefficient of coincidence. And that's all it is for triple point crosses. Pretty simple. Just pay attention to your numbers, make sure you get your order right, and you'll be fine.